So it's November 12th today. Um, we've got a lot of your treasure pulled out from the <laughs> chassis. Can you tell us a bit about it? Treasure indeed. Okay, as you remember, uh, the last weekend we uh, stripped the uh, top of the chassis off, the upper superstructure. Now we are cleaning out the bottom part of the hull, ready to uh, actually go and get it sandblasted and painted. And this involves removing all the infrastructure, uh, the electrics, any other uh, mechanical components. Concentrated today on the electrics. This is what we pulled out. We pretty well, everything is stripped out now. Um, showing it to you individually pieces. This is the uh, power supply rack for the radios. The radios require a dynamotor to drive them, each of the receiver, the uh, transmitter, and also an extra transmitter, if they, or extra receiver if they put it in there. So uh, these are the racks for them. The actual power supplies would plug into these big sockets like on this one, and a, as well as this one too. They would fit in there, fit into the grooves in there, and the wing nuts would come down, clamp them in place. Uh, they're fed with a heavy... Uh, cable that comes right off the batteries that fed into this junction box here it's disconnected now but anyway that's what powered powered up the radio racks again up there what we pulled out there that was the uh, the capillary tube for the thermostat or the heat uh, the temperature gauge on the driver's dashboard so we know what the water temperature is the coolant temperature in the engine is okay this is the uh, capillary tube for the thermostat uh, that screws into the rear part of the engine and part of the cooling system uh, near the radiators. That senses the uh, water temperature of the uh, inside the radiator of how hot it is. It, uh, it's an oil capillary so inside of here is a capsule. It's oil inside. As the temperature rises the oil pressure rises and the pressure forces itself the oil down through this long capillary tube. It's hooked into the back of the thermostat gauge and of course that makes the needle go up and down corresponding to what the engine temperature is or the water, actual water temperature of the engine. It's an indication to the driver as he's going along how, what temperature the engine's running at. He wants to keep it around 90 to 95 degrees centigrade. Once he goes over 100, then he's in the boiling point and he's got troubles then. You're going to start uh, blowing hoses, etc. So again, that's, well, that's what that is. A copper capillary tube. Uh, we might be able to reuse that. I'm not too sure. It's broken now because the uh, thermostat gauge is missing itself but uh, it's perhaps refillable with oil and if we get the right size gauge again we might be able to hook it back up again. That's uh, something for the, the future to worry about. The rusty part on it was just kind of a spiral metal coating that was on it to give it a bit of protection because that's just a, as I said, that's just a thin copper tube inside a capillary tube that the oil runs in. Uh, our other pieces here as we pulled out this is the uh, hop shelter or the main switch, i.e. it's a heavy duty switch. You can see the battery cables, they'd be tied onto the batteries. The power would come up here. The uh, driver could actually kill the main power and turn it back on on with this switch. It's an isolator for the batteries. Um, again, that fits back down. That is the solenoid there. So that would be the feedback to the starter off that. So that when you turn the key, that would click and put the main power back to the starter. Uh, the rest of the stuff is just some of the rotting wiring that we pulled out and what's left over. Another one of the battery jumpers there that goes along with that. This is the distribution uh, block that sat up beside the driver. A lot of the wiring came into here via through here, but went back to the engine. It was a junction distribution point. A couple more wires came out, went out overhead. There's the wire to feed the front uh, no-tech headlight. Another one went over for the light beside the radio operator and uh, a circuit breaker as well. All of it's in very rough condition, of course, because it's uh, 70 years old, been exposed to the elements. You'll notice some of the uh, wiring here, that's made out of aluminum. Of course, uh, nowadays, everybody uses copper for, uh, for battery, uh, battery cables. Of course, in World War II, copper was a uh, copper was a shortage uh, uh, material that was they were running shortage of uh, continuously. So they tended to substitute where they could. Heavy cables like this, aluminum, were used. Much lighter. They can still take the amperage, but at the same time, it uh, frees the copper up to be used for more uh, the more critical things need in the, needed in the wartime industries. Again, looking pretty horrible and ratty, but uh, nothing that can't be cleaned up and fixed. And uh, 
anybody that knows about wiring, it's, uh, you look at it, you understand it, mark it like uh, we've done here, all the connection points, and gradually when we go to put the, uh, everything back together again, these components will be cleaned up and we'll be running new conductors, new, new cabling, but we, at least we have the originals to go by, that'll give us an idea of how long things are and the gauge of the wire we'll have to use when we do replace it with a newer wire. Um, not much else I can tell you. A pile of a pile of rotten wiring that's got to be replaced, but at least we have it here, and it gives us a guide to go from. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you, Neil. No problem.